Hello everyone, this is Indrajit Ganguly and welcome to your history class. Dear students, in my last class I have discussed with you about the rise of the caliphate after the death of Hazrat Muhammad and breakup of the caliphate and a series of the caliphate established in the, uh, in the Middle East region. Right. In my today's class I will discuss with you how the spread of Islam became a huge concern for the Christianity and for the Christian world and which led to the massive religious war in the uh, history of world politics. Okay, Jerusalem was the holy place for the Christian. Why? Because Jerusalem was associated with the crucifixion and resurrection, uh, resurrection of Jesus Christ. I hope you know that uh, Jesus Christ was crucified in Jerusalem and that was in the date of Friday, right? And on Sunday, Jesus Christ came back and that was the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's why his death was known as Good Friday, was celebrated as Good Friday. And his uh, coming from the heaven, it was known as the resurrection of Jesus Christ and it was celebrated as Easter, right? So, Jerusalem was very holy place for the Christian world. In 638 AD, Jerusalem was conquered by Arabs. Why so? Because the Arabian Muslim, they also, they also have their religious claims on the Jerusalem. Because, remember students, Hajrat Muhammad, the Hajrat Muhammad visited Jerusalem before ascended uh, heaven and talked to the God in that place. So, uh, the journey of Hajrat Muhammad was in there in Jerusalem. So, that wise, uh, that's why Jerusalem, the Christians, uh, have their religious claims on Jerusalem and so in 638 uh, AD uh, the Arabian Muslims claimed uh, uh, captured Jerusalem during the reign of Caliph Umar okay so hostility towards the Muslim world became more pronounced in 11th century and therefore there were series of wars between Christians and Muslims from 1098 AD to 1278 AD and these series of conflicts is generally known as in the world politics as crusades or the religious war okay remember this date is not important only the definition of crusade is important it is a religious war between christian and muslims and now what are the consequences of the crusade right okay after the crusade after these uh, long of uh, the, after the long series of war spread islam generally spread in the eastern europe okay i hope you know that in eastern europe roman empire established their uh, kingdom but after that after the fall of the roman empire the christianity sorry the muslim world they established their control over the eastern europe next jerusalem was finally taken over by the muslims okay remember students jerusalem was a very place of conflict it's, it's a place of conflict in recent days i if you want to know about more about jerusalem you can visit internet and search about the history of Jerusalem because Jerusalem is the place where Christians, Muslims and Jews have their religious claims. It is a very interesting story and now, nowadays it is a, uh, became a place, it is a, it is a place of international conflicts. You can go to the internet and search about Jerusalem. Okay. And the third consequences of suicide was these battle left bitter memories and conflict. So the relationship between the Christian and Muslims uh, became uh, uh, poorer after the the after this religious war okay okay our next topic that is topic number uh, next topic after crusade that is economy of the islamic world agree based on agriculture urbanization uh, based on agriculture development of organ urbanization and spread of commerce <clears throat> okay first that is agriculture Remember students, agriculture was the principal occupation in the newly conquered territories. Basically, where, wherever the Islamic, uh, the uh, Arabians or later on Iranians or Turks, whatever, they established their control in a particular region or particular territory, they established, uh, they developed the agriculture of the particular territory because agriculture was the primary occupation and agriculture on the basis of agriculture basically uh, income is generally based on the agriculture okay remember students landowners had to pay one 
uh, had to pay a tax. It is a land tax which is known as Kharaj. And they had to pay from half to one fifth of its produce. I am repeating once again. Kharaj is a land tax and a landowner had to pay Kharaj from half to one fifth of its produce. The Muslims only uh, pay a tax called Ushar. It is also a land tax and that is had to produce on one tenth of the produce. So the difference between Kharaj and Ushar is that that is landowners had to pay half to one fifth and Ushar is pay one tenth of its produce. Okay. Okay. From 10th century, Iktadari system developed in the Islamic world. Remember students, Iktadari system is a very unique concept. What is Iktadari system? Here the word Ikta means a piece of land. And who particular which person is holding the land that is known as Iktadar. Okay, what was the duty of the Iktadar? The duty of the Iktadar is that collect tax or revenue from the particular area, particular Ikta. Okay, and these uh, revenue has to be uh, submit to has to be submitted to the Khalifa. So that is called Iktadari system. Let me tell you an interesting thing. I hope you know that uh, Muslim rules are was also established in India. So in Delhi Sultanate uh, was started from 1206 in India. Okay, Sultan Iltutmis, who was the ruler of the slave dynasty, he introduced Iktadari system in India for. Uh, uh, collecting land revenue from the Indian masses. So it was the Iktadari system but it was first developed in the Muslim war and that was in the 10th century. Okay, Islamic law gave tax concession to the people who brought land under cultivation. It was another unique thing that was developed by the Muslim Khalifa. Dams, whales, canals etc. constructed with the financial help of the state. Obviously Without developing agriculture, a state could not prosper, it could not flourish. So it was very important to develop the agricultural system. And therefore, dams, whales, canals, all are required. Next, new type, uh, types of crops such as cotton, oranges, bananas, watermelon, spinach, brinjal were grown and even exported to Europe. So this is the agricultural system of the Islamic world. Okay. Okay, next is about the urbanization of the Islamic world. As agriculture uh, activity spread, obviously, it led to the development of new towns and cities. Remember students, new garrison cities founded in the Islamic world that are Kufa, Basra and Cairo. Garrison cities or garrison towns mean the place where uh, soldiers existed. So obviously the Islamic world they are focusing about their internal secu securities and also they try to expand the more region because for the spreading of Islam. So more uh, soldiers, more army was required and for these army and soldiers garrison towns was established. Next, uh, Baghdad was the central capital of the empire. Many older towns such as Damascus, Isfahan and Samarkand get a new life. Okay. And the city plan was very unique of this Islamic state. Okay, just uh, have a look on the city plan of the Islamic state. At the heart of the city, there were two building complex. One, one is mosque, another one is central market. So every Islamic town at the heart, there are two building complex. One is mosque, another one is central market. Clear? Next. The cities were homes to administrators, basically scholars, merchants, ordinary citizens, servants, having living quarters. There were church, synagogue. Synagogue means a place where Jews were going for the, uh, their uh, devotion and worship and public path. Beyond the city walls, that means beyond the city wall, outside the city, there were inns and cemeteries. So this is the city plan in the Islamic state or Islamic world. Next, development of commerce. Commerce also gave another, uh, uh, gave the, commerce also very important for the, uh, for the development of Islamic state and Islamic world. Geographical location favored the Muslim empire. Obviously, you can, you understood that the Muslim empire basically situated in the Middle East portion. So, obviously, they can easily connect to the Asian continent and also the uh, European continent. So, it is the middle portion that wise it was known as Middle East. So, so obviously, this position gave a 
gave them a very unique position and therefore they can easily connect Indian Ocean and Mediterranean Sea. For five centuries, Arabian and Iranian traders monopolized maritime trade between India, China and Europe. Remember students, uh, they basically, uh, all the Arabian and Iranian traders, they basically collected uh, uh, silk, okay, uh, gunpowder, paper, uh, textiles from the India and China and these things are traded in the European market. Okay, so that's why, so, so for 500 years, more than 500 years, they usually, uh, they usually controlled the uh, maritime trade. Next one, there are two major tra trading routes. First one is Red Sea, another one is Persian Gulf. Okay, high value goods suitable for long distance sale, such as spices, textile, porcelain, porcelain, they, uh, they took porcelain from China, uh, spices and textile from India. And gunpowder was shipped from India and China to the Red Sea ports of Aden and Adiyab of the Gulf of Ports, Siraf and Basra. So in this way, the uh, Islamic world or Islamic state became prosperous. This is it for today. In my next class, I will discuss with you about the Islamic uh, learning, Islamic culture and Islamic literature. Thank you and have a nice day.